What's good, Josh? Bull Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out ten wrestlers who clearly had a better run in WWE than AEW. There are some wrestlers that we thought maybe would get, you know, a better, better rub, better push um, in another company, and ultimately uh, they they had some hype for a little bit, and it kind of fell apart. We know a few. You got Andrade, one of them. Um, Alistair Black. Well, you call by Alistair Black. He's Malachi Black now. And uh, AEW, he's another one. Miro, we used to go by Rusev. He's another one. Like, these are some of the guys that honestly, granted, at the time, no, they probably would have not, they wouldn't have been better in WWE. You know, at the time when Vince had things under control. Now, they probably would be, for sure, better in WWE, more over. And granted, at the time, some of them had a little bit more buzz, maybe more so in, like, NXT. And, you know, definitely Rusev was more over in WWE than he is in AEW. But at the same time, you got to also look at how, who, how they were booked and why they even left in the first place. So, we're going to get right into this, man. Uh, appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. Let's do this thing. Well, the grass isn't always greener on the other side. No, when a not. talent leaves WWE in favor of AEW, oh, Adam Cole? They they'll be given the treatment they didn't receive in WWE and will be presented as a top star. However, this isn't always the case. There are certain talents who made the jump from WWE to AEW who actually had a better spot in WWE than they do at the present time in Tony Khan's promotion. Yep. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 wrestlers who clearly had a better run in WWE than AEW. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive links. Mm -hmm. Also, be sure to check out our non-wrestling right, channel, to Wrestle Incredible. If you haven't already. Number 10, Sean Spears. When Sean oh, Spears yeah. first joined AEW, things started off well as he mm -hmm. entered into a feud with one of AEW's top stars he in Cody super Rhodes. Hot However, it wasn't before long that Spears would be heavily moved down the card and solidified as a lower mid-card talent. So far in 2022, Spears has only wrestled on AEW's flagship show, AEW Dynamite, on three separate occasions, Damn. and he's lost every single one of these aforementioned matches. Now, okay, let's be fair. While Spears' WWE run as Ty Dillinger didn't exactly light the world on fire, he was certainly over, and there was certainly no arguing yeah, with that. The gimmick, Dillinger yeah. and his 10 gimmick was really popular with fans, and he actually got some great matches, particularly during his time in NXT. NXT yep. It's a shame that AEW have no concrete plans for him, as he certainly has talent, but it appears that Tony Khan has no idea how to utilize him effectively. Number 9. Athena mm. Upon Athena's AEW debut, fans were quick to praise AEW for bringing in someone credible to the women's division. Oh, Athena had bro. a decent run in WWE, which was highlighted by an acclaimed feud with Asuka in yep. NXT. She was no doubt one of Triple H's favorite female stars and would have been in a strong position on television if she was still in the company. Oh yeah. Unfortunately, Athena's AEW... If she was still there... If she was still there... When Triple H took over... She would be a okay. I promise you this now. She would have been fine. She would have been fine. But she left right before Vince said, "I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna go ahead and hang it, hang it up." Dang, man, that's crazy. AEW run has quickly lost any spark it initially had. Even though she's become a common feature on AEW programming, Athena has lost several big matches, and it looks like AEW have no plans to make a champion. In September 2022, Athena won just one single match on AEW programming. This was a match on AEW Dark Elevation, which is insanely concerning and highlights how little AEW value one of their finest female stars. That's crazy. Number 8, Kyle O'Reilly. Before Kyle O'Reilly made the jump to AEW, he was one of the biggest baby faces mm -hmm. on the NXT brand. WWE wanted him to stay. However, O'Reilly was of the belief that he would have more success in AEW, but this has yet to transpire. O'Reilly has spent most of his time in AEW playing second fiddle to Adam Cole, which is a massive waste of his talents. O'Reilly's NXT run showed everyone that O'Reilly is a top single star, and placing him in a tag team is simply wasted potential. Whilst his in-ring work is excellent, the AEW audience just hasn't taken to him for some reason. Mm -hmm. and his storylines have been weak and his character work has been limited at best. And I enjoyed his feud he had with Adam Cole before he left. I was digging that, you know, on NXT. Best. It also doesn't help that O'Reilly has been currently out of action with an injury, and when he eventually returns to AEW television, it'll be curious to see where he exactly fits on the show. 
Number 7, Jeff Hardy. Mm. Jeff Hardy is one of the most popular wrestlers to ever lace up a pair of boots. When he debuted on AEW programming, there was already concern for Hardy. Hardy had left WWE on bad terms and it looked mm -hmm. like he was struggling with his personal demons. Yeah. Hardy has had a number of matches in AEW, including a match with the Young Bucks, which led to extensive concern for Hardy's welfare. Yeah. In the summer of 2022, Hardy's AEW run would come to an extreme halt, as he was suspended following another DUI arrest. Now it's unknown when or even if Hardy will be back in the company, as AEW president Tony Khan has made it clear that Hardy needs to get the help he needs before he permits him to return to AEW programming. Number six, Buddy Matthews. A WWE now with that one, he was still just as over. In my opinion, I think he was still just as over. It's just I think everyone loves Jeff. So whether he's in AEW or WWE, he's gonna always be over. I think it's just his personal things that he was dealing with really kind of derailed a lot that he could you know had going for him. And the same thing in WWE. So. Of Buddy Matthews, aka Buddy Murphy, had a ton of special moments, from his matches with Roman Reigns Which and Daniel Bryan to his well received partnership with Seth Rollins. He was always on the brink of major success, but there was always something holding him back. When Matthews signed for AEW in 2022, oh, yeah. fans immediately thought of the dream matches he would have in the company. However, Buddy Matthews was placed in the House of Black stable, which has failed to have the appropriate level of writing dedicated to it to make the stable work. Nope. Now with leader Malachi Black taking a leave of absence from AEW, Matthews is in a state of limbo. There yep. have been reports that he's unhappy in AEW and he has a yep. right to be annoyed with his position. The former cruiserweight champion came into AEW with so much promise, but the magic has quickly been lost. Yeah. Number 5, Malachi Black. Speaking, Speaking Malachi of the Black. House of Black, Malachi Black's AEW run can be summed up in one word, underwhelming. When Facts. Black first arrived in AEW, there was excess excitement as Black is incredibly gifted and creative and fans were excited to see what Black would do. However, his feuds and matches have just felt off. His presentation has been weak and his storylines have been lackluster. As we mentioned when discussing House of Black member Buddy Matthews, Black has taken a leave of absence from AEW to concentrate on his mental health. Mm -hmm. He remains under AEW contract, but there are substantial rumors that Black wants to return to WWE. Whilst his main roster run fell flat, his NXT run was tremendous. His and with NXT Triple H now running WWE great. creative, Black is definitely a name that the game would want to see return. Number four, Mir Yeah, man. I would love to see uh, Aleister Black back in WWE because it's once again... I would trust Triple H to take care of him, treat him with, treat his character with respect. That's just my personal opinion on it. Miro. Amiro, aka Rusev, had an interesting WWE career. Starting off as a villain and feuding with John Cena, mm -hmm. Rusev quickly turned into a fan favorite. Yep. He would win Rusev the US Day. title on a number of occasions, and whilst WWE <clears throat> certainly failed to capitalize on his popularity, Rusev without question had a better run in WWE than he has in mm -hmm. AEW. Miro has been openly critical of his position in AEW, and he seemingly pulled it all together in relation to his character work, but there are evidently no plans from AEW to use him in an appropriate manner. Miro has started to use social media as a tool to air these frustrations, and Miro is often liking tweets which reference his poor AEW run. He oh, even yeah. like a tweet that outright declared that he had a better run in WWE, so it's apparent that Miro He did! Even though they didn't utilize him to their fullest potential, he was so over Rusev Day that he was so over. And it wasn't supposed to get over. That was when he was a heel, but it got over. And they didn't really capitalize on him like they should have. They didn't. They didn't capitalize on him. He had a better run there under Vince McMahon than he's having a, uh, having right now under Tony Khan. Here's the consensus of the wrestling fan base. Number three, Claudia Castagnoli. A former mm. US champion, Cesaro, aka Claudia Castagnoli, was always moments away from the top of WWE. In 2021, yep. he had the most successful year in WWE to date, having secured a win over Seth Rollins at WrestleMania 38 Which was a and good match. a pay per view against Roman Reigns. He departed WWE as he felt he would be a better fit for AEW. But things started off well for Cesaro, who now uses the name do. of Claudio Castagnoli in the promotion, as he quickly won the Ring of Honor World title, but this reign was a complete waste of time. He would only defend a title once on AEW Dynamite, and this happened to be the same match he lost the title in. He would drop the title to Chris Jericho, and now there's a major concern that he's going to disappear from TV completely. Claudio is a member of the Blackpool Combat Club alongside John Moxley and Brian Danielson, but with Moxley once again winning the AEW World title, the status of the faction is up in the air. 
Number two, Adam Cole. Mm, I'm so yeah. secret that Adam Cole was one of Triple H's favorite oh talents. Oh my god. And even though Cole is signed with AEW, he's admitted that he often texts Triple H and Shawn Michaels, which highlights just how strong the relationship is. Cole's AEW run has had its moments of brilliance, including yeah. him winning the Owen Hart Foundation tournament. However, his other storylines, including his saga with the Undisputed Elite, have been poorly executed. Yep. Cole is one of the best AEW have on the roster, but it's clear that he was brought in without a concrete plan on how to book and present his character. Now, currently, Cole is out of action with an injury, and when he returns, it seems likely that AEW are going to continue with the Undisputed Elite storyline, which would be an utter waste of all the talent involved. And number one. And yeah, man. Uh, Adam Cole, he, he was so over. In WWE and NXT, like he was mega over, and they they what they had planned for him on the main roster. The reports were Vince was he was about to fucking bury this guy. He wasn't about to really use him. So I understood why he left. I just you know it just sucks because now Triple H is in charge. Oh bro, I'm, oh man, imagine if Triple H was able to take control ahead of time. Oh. I'm going to be honest with you, and we got to be, we got to keep this a stack. You know what? I'm going to talk about it after this video. Well, after the initial video, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give my honest opinions, and we got to be real with each other on this one. Andrade. Andrade has made it perfectly clear over oh, the yeah, he wants out that he's unhappy in AEW. He wants out. From liking tweets referencing his poor booking to retweeting tweets that criticize AEW and Tony Khan, Andrade has just simply had enough. He went out. Andrade's AEW run has been a disaster. He's had several managers, including Vicky and Chavo Guerrero, but these have failed to add anything meaningful to his character. Andrade has only secured two victories on AEW Dynamite in 2022, Damn. it appears that this is unlikely to improve as 2022 rolls on. Now it goes without saying that Andrade would be thriving in WWE currently, as one of his biggest supporters Triple H would no Triple doubt H, love to yep. see him back, and Andrade would be able to recapture the special aura that surrounded him during his time in NXT. He's but there you have it folks, Mega the wrestlers who clearly had- So I, I have to put this out there. This was a great video. Um, I had to put this out there. We all know if Triple H was in charge a few years ago when we had all this hot NXT talent. We all know if he was truly in charge a few years ago. I don't think we have half the roster or the, the amount of people from WWE that went over to AEW. I don't think we have half of them. I'm just being dead brutally honest. Being super brutally honest. Some people I could possibly see going. But if we really had Triple H taking control of things a few years ago. I don't think we have half of these people. I don't think uh, Ember Moon would have left. I don't, I don't think Adam Cole and probably Undisputed Era probably would have been a new faction on the main roster. They would have stayed. I think Keith Lee would have stayed. I think Andrade would have stayed. I think a lot of people... Buddy Murphy would have stayed. I think a lot of these people would have stayed, bro. They were just this new wave of wrestlers from NXT. I think they would have stayed. That's just my honest opinion. T Tony Khan wouldn't have these guys. If it wasn't for Vince McMahon pretty much giving them away. That's literally what it was. Vince McMahon just saying, I, I ain't got nothing for you. Here you go. He was giving them giving them the chance to really like make some moves. And I don't think... Tony Khan had the right of people around him or has the right of people around him in the sense of the booking wise on how to really book these guys to really capitalize on their momentum because they all get you know it's always the hype and the love when you know what I'm saying like when they first come in and then it takes about a couple weeks and then that hype and love dies down and a lot it, large of it comes from just how they're booked how they're presented all this type of stuff. It is multiple factors. But I will say this. Anything can happen in the future. But granted, these guys are locked in fucking five-year contracts. So, I don't know. I don't know. Hell, I would have loved if Samoa Joe could have stayed and actually been a prompt. Bro. Oh, my God. Samoa Joe versus Roman again? We got a different Roman now? A face Samoa Joe, a heel? Oh, my God. Uh, uh, it's just tragic. Comment down below. Let me know. Do you guys agree with me on this? If Triple H would have taken over years prior to now, that a lot of the people that's in AEW from WWE would have not jumped ship. I, I can't be the only one that thinks that way. I'm just being honest. Comment down below. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on that. But I appreciate all the love and support. Road 2.
Honey K, appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.